Okay. In the previous videos, we discussed enabling the longitudinal data collection module, setting up our events, and designating instruments for our events. In this video, we're going to talk about this, the optional scheduling module, which allows us to set up schedules with dates and times for administering our longitudinal studies in REDCap. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Enable down here. And I'm going to go up to define my events, which we had previously seen is where we set up the individual time points of our longitudinal study. When I click on define my events, if I was to go in, I now have this option for days offset and offset range. So if I go ahead and click on the pencil icon, we might say that the first time point, I'm fine with that being on day one, but then the 30 day follow up I actually presumably want to be close for 30 days later than day one. And so we might say plus or minus three. And the days offset might be defined about by our studies uh, protocol for how we're administering our project. So we'll say save. Now it's jumped to the end since 30 is the last, but we just see here the 90 day. So I'll just click here. These days offset will always be off of the first time point. And so again, I'll do 90 plus or minus three. So it's important to note this is 90 after this, not 60 because of the 30 day. It's always gonna be from time point one. And finally, 120 plus or minus three. And save. And I could go ahead and do that on intervention two, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. Well, I might as well, because we'll see how that affects the scheduling module. So we'll do 30, three, three, save. This is the 120, three, three, save, and the 90 day. So now our study has a loose time timeline that goes with, or not so loose timeline that goes with our study's time points. Now, as we go in, we might click on add edit records. We have the option of assigning an individual to either arm one or arm two. So I'll just say the first can be an arm one. We can create a new record and we can see for the different time points, we have the option of filling out the relevant forms. In a previous video, I mentioned that if we don't assign an instrument to some time point, we'll be unable to fill it out. And that's because it will appear as just this gray area with no gray button to, to check on. And if we wanted to go in and check a given item, we can click on the gray circle. We can answer some questions and we could submit and exit. When we enabled the scheduling module, we have this feature up here that appears under data collection for scheduling. And when I click on this, we can assign to a new record or we can schedule an existing record. So if I schedule person number one and have that they're coming in today for their first arm first visit, we can generate a schedule. As we go down, we see suggested dates. We have optional times that they may be coming in. So perhaps we're scheduling them to come in at, for example, 11, 30. And then while they're here, we might schedule them for their next visit in April. And we might say that they'll come in at 1030 in the morning. And as well as, let's just say 130 in June, and then their 120 day, they'll come in at, for the sake of argument, 230. And we can create the schedule. If I refresh the page, I also have the option for creating for person number two, and I could choose which arm I want them to be in. And perhaps I know they're going to come in for their first visit on Friday. I can then generate the schedule. Here we can see when there's a weekend date, it will give a red warning. It's not to say we can't schedule on the weekend, but perhaps we might prefer to schedule on uh, a Monday through Friday date. Something else to note is that if we set things up too far outside of the uh, too far outside of the recommended window that we'd set up before for the range of the plus or minus three. We'll know if I click over here, I get a warning saying it's outside of the, uh, the protocols date range. 
so we can go through and adjust accordingly. I'm not going to worry about the times for right now. We can go ahead and say create schedule. Once this is done, I can go over to the calendar and on any given date, we can see if we have participants who need to be uh, administered questionnaires. So on Friday, I might log in and say, oh, patient number two is coming in. And if I'd set the time, we might know they were coming in at uh, whatever time I'd chosen, say 12 o'clock. And when I click on their number, I get a pop-up window uh, to access the specific forms that they need to fill out on that date. We could also, if we wanted, we jumped back to the project setup. Under the additional customizations, we could actually set up a custom record label or designate a second, secondary unique field. So for example, if we were collecting a study ID in addition to the record ID that was a little bit more descriptive, we could designate that as a secondary field. So in addition to that number one, number two, we would see their study ID. It's strongly recommended that you not use an MRN or a real patient uh, identifying number for the secondary unique field, uh, that it be a study specific number that doesn't have meaning outside of your study. Uh, but you can use this field to set up an additional field such as a, a subject ID to see their number on that calendar feature. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to set up a study with multiple events with a screening arm and a, uh, and a subsequent study enrollment arm.